good day. In this lesson, we will revise all the graphs of motion to make sure we understand them and their uses. Let us start with the constant velocity graphs. We have learned that for constant velocity, the gradient of a displacement time graph is a straight line, and that the gradient gives us the velocity. The velocity versus time graph for constant velocity is a horizontal straight line graph, and the area under the graph gives us the displacement at a specific time. Finally, for constant velocity, there is zero acceleration. We can summarize this by putting all three graphs together. So we use the gradient of the displacement versus time graph to calculate the velocity, and the gradient of the velocity graph to calculate the acceleration. We use the area of the velocity versus time graph to calculate the displacement at that point in time. Now let's revise the graphs of motion for constant acceleration. We have learned that for constant acceleration, the gradient of a displacement versus time graph is a curve. If velocity increases, the change in displacement gets larger as time goes on, and the gradient of the displacement time graph gets steeper and steeper. If the velocity decreases, this displacement versus time graph is still a curve, but notice that the gradient is getting less steep. In both cases, Remember that the gradient of the tangent at any point gives us the instantaneous velocity at that point. Since the velocity changes at a constant rate, the velocity time graph is a straight line. If the velocity increases, the velocity time graph is a straight line with a positive gradient. And if the velocity decreases at the constant rate, the velocity time graph is a straight line with a negative gradient. Remember, we can use the gradient of the velocity versus time graph to calculate the acceleration. And we can use the area under the velocity versus time graph to calculate the displacement at that point in time. Finally, since the acceleration is constant, the acceleration graph is a straight line parallel to the x-axis. If the velocity increases at a constant rate, the acceleration time graph is the horizontal line above the x-axis. If the velocity decreases constantly, the acceleration is negative. That means that the acceleration versus time graph for an object that is constantly decreasing in velocity is a straight line parallel to the x-axis, but this time it is below the x-axis. Remember that since acceleration is a vector, a negative acceleration could also indicate a change in direction. So a graph like this that shows a negative acceleration could actually mean that the object is speeding up in the opposite direction, thus the change in sign. This may seem a bit difficult to understand, but we will work through this in more detail when we look at the examples in this series. In both cases, the area between the graph and the x-axis gives the velocity at a certain point in time. We can summarize all of this in one diagram. The gradient at specific points in time on the displacement versus time graph gives us the instantaneous velocity. The gradient of the velocity versus time graph can be used to calculate the acceleration. The area under the acceleration versus time graph gives the velocity, while the area under the velocity versus time graph can be used to calculate the displacement at that point in time. Grade 10s, in this lesson we have revised all the graphs of motion for both constant velocity and constant acceleration. You'll find more information about graphs of motion at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. This is a good time to do the questions in the task video. Bye-bye.